So my talk's a bit of a, a follow-on from Gordon's earlier, but here I'm going to talk more about the re-emergence of fortified settlement in Ireland around the time of 400 to 600 AD. And I'm going to specifically look into something that Paddy touched on earlier, which is the a reuse and integration of earlier prehistoric sites um, and their integration into elite settlements at this formative period of Ireland. So this is something that's really touched upon in Northern Britain by Richard Bradley and uh, Steve Driscoll and in Anglo-Saxon uh, England by Sarah Simple and uh, to a lesser extent in Ireland um, by um, Connor Newman. But when we look more deeply into the actual archaeology of all this, we see that they are actually selectively um, appropriating hilltop fortified sites, which they may deem as ancient uh, seats of power and using that as a way to legitimate their uh, contemporary place in society. But before we go into all that, um, we'll look what's going on with enclosure in later prehistoric and early medieval Ireland. So a few people already today have noted that uh, in Ireland we have a huge amount of settlement evidence in the form of up to 76,000 recorded ring forts, thought to be up to 60,000. Um, but when we look more specifically at the excavated sites, so there are well in excess of 330 excavated examples, um, and that really shows us that there's a much narrower chronology um, than just early medieval period. So usually what we see is univalent ring forts, which are single bank and single ditch, are built around 600 to 900 AD, and then multivalent examples, um, which tend to be slightly larger, um, may originate slightly earlier, around the 4th, 5th century uh, AD. And when we look further back, we see that there's quite a considerable gap in enclosure building and occupation um, up until this period around uh, the 4th, 5th century AD. Um, all of our big hilltop sites tend to date to the Bronze Age, and over the course of the last seven or eight years, we've dated quite a lot of these. And rather than push that chronology forward, we pushed it back into the Middle Bronze Age. Um, and then we look at other uh, internally ditched enclosures, these um, famous ceremonial enclosures that uh, are, are Iron Age in date. Uh, very few of these have been dated, um, but those that have, like Navan Fort and Tara, tend to date around 400, 100 BC. And then, very similar to what we see in Britain, after about 200, 100 BC, we see an almost complete drop-off in fort building and occupation. So we have a period in Ireland uh, of about 500 years where we see very, very little in terms of enclosure. Uh, and then pretty much at the exact same time as in Scotland, all of a sudden we get these uh, much smaller forts, tend to be multivalent, and they tend to appear around 350, 400 AD. So unfortunately, very few of these have been excavated on any great scale, but those that have, like uh, Garons and County Cork, um, which has links with the uh, Uyek uh, uh, Mumen, which are uh, a royal sept of the Ogonot. Um, and this enclosure has produced internal settlement with dates to around the 5th, 6th century AD. Um, but unfortunately, the actual enclosing elements of this have never been dated. Uh, but excavation in the 1940s have shown uh, quite a considerable amount of high status uh, prestige metalworking in the form of bronze working, iron working, glass, tin, lead, uh, and so on, as well as uh, it produced one of the largest uh, assemblages of Roman uh, ceramics in Ireland known to date. Um, so obviously there's a, a very uh, important uh, elite settlement uh, going on here and its links to high status craft working and um, Roman material. Uh, but all of this material was found in the lower levels abutting the bank, um, and that material would give a date range of about 450-500 AD. So that suggests that the enclosure itself may predate that slightly, so maybe even uh, around 400 AD. And 
the latest excavations in the 1990s by Mary O'Donnell actually produced a, a Middle Bronze Age date from uh, one of the uh, excavation pits you see there in orange on the top right. And that sealed other unexcavated uh, layers uh, and pits that potentially might suggest that there's uh, some Bronze Age activity going on here. So when we look at these multivalve enclosures, trivalve, quadrivalve enclosures in general, we see this linked with Roman material. Uh, and then also at other sites, we see links with these much larger hilltop fortifications. So the Rat of the Synods, for example, uh, in Tara, we have um, the latest phase of enclosure, which is a quadrivalve enclosure linked with um, Roman material. And this probably dates around the, the third century AD. Uh, more recently, the Hill of War test excavation by Steve Davis produced um, some early medieval dates around four or 500 AD, but also showed that the enclosure is uh, surrounded by a much larger hill fort that's um, late Bronze Age in date. So even these newly constructed enclosures um, are being built um, either with reference to much larger hilltop settlements or with reference to earlier prehistoric uh, monuments and activity in the landscape. And we see this on a broader level at some of the famous um, Bronze Age hill forts in Ireland, at Dunangus, for example, which is um, late Bronze Age in date. We see um, the inner rampart of the fort being heavily reworked at the beginning of the early medieval period, um, at which time they place two burials uh, at either side of the entrance to the fort. Uh, at Downpatrick, we see a, a large probable Bronze Age hill fort um, being reoccupied after a considerable period of silting up of the ditch. We see uh, iron um, working within the ditch and we have early medieval pottery. Uh, and then whenever there's small scale excavation at these sites, like at Nakana Kuig, Hahis Fort, Muhan, Rahali, we see early medieval activity. But it's really not until we get to the very large scale excavations that we see really interesting uh, things going on. So Freestone Hill, Hill here, for example, in County Kilkenny. Um, again, this is a, a fantastic uh, Univalve Hill Fort, uh, most likely late Bronze Age in date. So no red carbon dates, but some of the material culture found underneath the bank in the ditch fill and within some of these uh, circular hut platforms are proper late Bronze Age um, artifacts. So we probably see a period here of about 1,000, 1,200 years where the site is abandoned, we see no activity, and then all of a sudden in the third, fourth century AD, we see uh, the construction of a 40 meter diameter uh, subcircular enclosure. And that delimited um, a considerable amount of Roman material. And when I say a considerable amount, I mean a uh, very small amount of Roman material, but for Ireland, it's very considerable. Um, so we have a Roman coin, 4th century AD, we have some toilet Im implements, a brooch, uh, and so on. And this has led uh, people like O'Floyne and Cahill to suggest that uh, Freestone Hill, the enclosure we see here, is actually a Romano-British rural shrine. Um, but uh, that's quite tentative, uh, and really what it's showing here, regardless of if it's a shrine or not, is elite activity within an ancient seat of power after a considerable period of inactivity. And importantly, we see this elite activity associated with Roman material. And at this time, we see the reintroduction of the building of enclosure. And we see a very similar picture at Clogher in, in County Tyrone. Uh, again, a, a probable Bronze Age hill fort. Um, that's been reoccupied in the 6th century when uh, a very large univalve uh, ring fort is built. And this is associated again with Roman material and, and uh, Mediterranean material later on. Um, and is also used most likely as a penannular brooch workshop. And this site, um, like Rons and, and uh, like um, Wrath and Citizens, is probably associated with some uh, elite um, royal settlement as well. Uh, and even some of the traditional Bronze Age hill forts like Ratgal here, um, we see um, Roman Iron Age and early medieval activity. So here again we have 48 radiocarbon dates from here. Um, 
the majority of those are late Bronze Age, uh, but we do see uh, a, a large stone built castle right in the middle of this. And some of the excavation material produced some late Iron Age um, or Romano British material like glass beads, uh, a strap tag, um, bar toggle, and so on. And even prior to these excavations, uh, Orpin has suggested that um, Rakal was the center for the Kinsla around 400 AD. And later on, he suggested that um, Rakal was actually the Dunum identified in Ptolemy's map. But more recently, scholars would suggest that that Dunum is probably Brussels on Ring. But regardless, Brussels on Ring is another likely late Bronze Age hill fort. So we're seeing, regardless where it is, it's probably linked with an ancient seat of power. Um, but looking more generally at this, we see um, a, a, quite a number of these Bronze Age hill forts being reused as royal settlements, um, uh, most notably of which is the Grand of Alec in County Donegal, where you see this amazing univallet ring fort, and that's surrounded by uh, a very, very large trivallet, widely spaced, um, likely Bronze Age hill fort again. So as well as the archaeological evidence, we have the historical connections with some of these hilltop enclosures. Um, so for example, we have uh, the Commons of Lloyd, where Queen Maeve is supposedly ha to have camped um, in the Epic Baton. Fawn Hill is traditionally known as the burial place of Nile of the Nine Hostages. Um, Friarstown uh, Hill in County Limerick is associated with uh, Tara Lucra, which is um, uh, described in the intoxication of the Ulstermen. Um, we have uh, Keshkarn here, which is surrounding a very large cairn and is linked with Kukulin. And most notably, then we have Kaharkan Ri, which is traditionally, or, or in the historical text, is seen as the um, settlement of Kuri, who is a, a, one of Kukulin's main antagonists. Um, but as well as the historical connections, we do have um, some very nice archaeology linking this all together. And, and all of this comes together really at Navin Fort, where we see quite a lot of historical evidence suggesting this is an important uh, ancient royal site. And we see some evidence in the 4th to 7th century AD that this is being potentially settled by elites. Um, so we have some 4th century AD dates from the upper fill of the site A ring ditch here. And we also have um, some uh, material culture that dates to around 6th, 7th century AD. More recently, we've done geophysical survey and we found some potential uh, rectangular structures abutting the ditch. So this might suggest, suggest that we actually have um, early medieval settlement at around this uh, important time period of, of four, five, six hundred AD. Uh, but not only that, not only are these elites potentially settling these ancient royal sites, but they're also integrating them into uh, royal inauguration and assembly practices. So Paddy's work at uh, Naklang and Rahina Madra has um, revealed a, a very large oval enclosure uh, surrounding Rahina Madra ring fort and he suggested that this is the, the core of Onak Clogger, um, which is an important assembly site um, in Cashel. Um, and although Paddy has suggested that this finds um, it, its, its um, closest comparanda with some of the Iron Age um, provincial sites like Navan and Tara, um, it could just as easily be late Bronze Age. But regardless, what's happening here is these elites are integrating these large hilltop fortifications um, into their um, their way of manifesting and exercising power and status during this period. And I would suggest that there's probably uh, a lot more of these enclosures to be found. Um, here's the one we found earlier at uh, the Rapid on Mace. Um, this is a site that's uh, very similar to some of the nuclear hill forts we see um, in Scotland. Um, we have this craggy outcrop that's terraced. Um, excavations by Hodgkinson um, has shown that there are 8th century or 8th, 9th century um, earthworks surrounding the site. Um, and then some aerial photographs and some um, photogrammetry have shown um, some uh, large, probably ceremonial uh, enclosure here on the 
um, hilltop next to it. And then we have very like Rahi Namadra. Um, we have this Unibelt ring fort, and then we have a, a very slight, large old enclosure surrounding that. So, as well as uh, elites using these places for settlement, but they're, they're also um, using them for assembly practices and um, ceremonies. Um, so, putting this all together here, we're seeing in Ireland, uh, very similar to, to Scotland and, and Wales, um, the reuse of ancient seats of power to legitimate um, elite culture and, and the status of an elite. And this is particularly important at, a, at an early stage of the uh, early medieval period where we're seeing um, quite a lot of change in terms of uh, political and, and uh, cultural activity. And Richard Bradley has suggested that this link with the past, this physical link with the past would have been uh, particularly important at this transitional period um, throughout um, early medieval Ireland, Britain, and in other parts of Europe. Uh, but more specifically, he notes that um, these elites were very selective in their appropriation of older monuments. And we're seeing that in Ireland too, where at the beginning of the early medieval period, they're specifically targeting these um, large hilltop fortified ancient sites as um, settlements and integrating them with other royal practices. And on a, a broader note with regards to the newly created enclosures, we see similar things happening in Ireland and in Scotland. So we see um, multi-valid enclosures like Arons, which are much smaller than earlier hilltop sites. Um, very similar to Scotland, where you see places like uh, Rhiney, which are, are much, much smaller than the Iron Age sites. Um, they're multi valid They're associated with Roman elite material. Um, they're springing up around 350-400 AD. And um, very, although very few have been excavated, um, those that have shown that they are going out of use around 600 AD. And that's when we're getting a separation of our uh, settlement patterns in Ireland, we're getting um, what's probably seen as the more traditional um, hierarchical level of settlement where we have univalid, multivalid enclosures um, associated with uh, free farmers and, and kings. Um, whereas in Scotland, we're just seeing the elite centres, the, the hilltop sites. Um, so I better leave it at that. I'm well over time. So thank you very much.